Wood run number two a week later and things have changed. The old drift has become a new drift. Oh, I see a dog was clawing his way up here and so was a person. This is insane. This is like five feet deep. I'm not going to get through that. That's no good. I might have to take my own trail over through this. Holy moly, that's hard as a rock too. Not good, folks. I might have to dig her out. Actually, it's almost hard enough. I might be able to drive on top of it. I'll probably get stuck though. I'll give her a whirl. Well, folks, what a disaster that was. So that drift that I just showed you, it was way too deep. So I went past it and there was another little trail that somebody had cut up the bank. So I went up the bank, made it no problem, got to like a little bit of snow, maybe two feet, nothing big. I got stuck. So I put it in diff lock thinking, you know, that'll help me get through it. And it would normally, but they got that stupid rev limiter. It just gets you into more trouble than anything. And that's exactly what it did. And then it stayed in diff lock and I couldn't take it out. So it got jammed in diff lock. Well, just as I got there, uh, this fellow I used to work at the mine with, like I haven't seen the guy in about seven or eight years. And he, of course now he's got a great big beard and everything. And I looked and I was like, hey, I know this guy. Lloyd is his name. I think it was Lloyd, yeah. What was that his last name? I can't remember. Anyway, I just remember he was on my cross shift. And and uh, so, uh, yeah, so I shook his hand and uh, <laughs> he was actually, he gave me, a, he was already stomping the, the snow to, to help me get out because it was just a hard crust on top. And it turns out he just lives nearby and stuff. And yeah, so it kind of, we ended up, I stand, stood there and, BS with him for like about an hour. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. And before that, I ran into another fellow that I hadn't seen in a long time. I had this piece of plywood on the roof right here, right up here. And I had it hold my tarp down. So anyways, here I am driving along and all of a sudden I seen this guy, like I haven't seen him for oh, a few years anyways. Uh, he used to be a customer of mine back when I had my shop. Anyway, so I seen him and I recognized him. So I slammed on my brakes and the plywood went flying right off the roof out into the middle of the road. So I grabbed it and I threw it in the back of his truck and I said, hey, I'll pick this up later. <laughs> and he goes, okay, right on. Yeah, I just live right here. And I didn't even know he lived there. It's kind of a joke. I was like, oh, I was just joking, but yeah, I'll come and I'll come pick that up on the way home. So anyways, it's just about dark now. Probably looks light through the camera, but it's, it's getting dark. So... There's a couple of trees that were already down over here. Let's go see. And uh, I think I'm getting this load. I don't think this load's going to be for me. I think it's going to be for my neighbor. The uh, guy I got the truck off of. Let's see. Uh, see this one? It's, it was dead when it blew over. But that's a balsam fir. Or like one of those uh, paper mache spruces, I call them. <laughs> It, they're spruce, but they just, yeah, they don't burn that great. We'll see. That one might not be bad because it's solid logs. <clears throat> but I want to get some really good stuff for them. Like really good, good, uh, that tight growth stuff that was over here. That stuff burns like crazy, crazy hot. And then there's this guy. Yeah. Okay, well. we got over here this one's down this is the one from the other day now uh, this has been down for a while I don't know how good it'll be sometimes those ones aren't great we'll get something happening over here I brought the Radley today and I bought I brought uh, the Mastercraft aka 2350 CVA, Poulin, 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 whatever the heck you want to call it. Poulin, that's the real name. And uh, yeah, we're gonna, I just richened it up. 
Actually, let's just see how it starts. Here, I'll set the camera up. I brought, I got a new tripod. We'll set the camera up here for you. We're back. Okay, this thing hasn't started in ooh, a couple weeks, but I did richen it up just before we left. I richened up the low and just a little bit of the high. We'll just see how it starts. Probably gonna take a while. Let's try it. Oh, uh oh, too cold for the starter. Is it on? Yeah, it's on. folks not a very good winter saw not gonna get high reviews <laughs> yeah. see why I like my primers this is why a lot of guys say they don't like them but they're nice for this Twenty-seven pulls later. <laughs> well, I'm not cold anymore. Okay, it's not gonna go. Didn't even fire. Be right back. That's all it took. My hands are right frozen now. Choke on. Let's try the old Radley. We'll give it eight primes. See what happens. Nothing wants to start. It's too cold. I guess that's uh that saw just wouldn't do it for me that right there that just rules it out right there if i only had one saw that little poland little mastercraft poolin poolan wouldn't do it um yeah in this cold weather just getting the fuel up to the carb uh, helps but i mean other other saws they start better i don't know why that one didn't start hadn't been running for a couple of weeks so but she didn't go. So I'm gonna take this tree here, I think. And we'll get get on with our lives. I don't know if this camera's gonna keep rolling because it's so darn cold right now. But we'll see.
That was a good save. I screwed up. Here, let's go see what I did wrong. And I knew it halfway through, but it was too late. I, I made that back cut down on an angle a little too much. And that was a big no-no. But whatever, I seen it coming. I knew it was coming and uh, I saved my saw because otherwise I probably would have bent the bar. But the tree did go exactly where I wanted it to, so that's good. But yeah, you see how much of an angle that that back cuts on? That's wrong. Don't do that. It should have been more flat. I uh, my sights were a little off when I when I made my mark. That's okay. Things don't always go as planned. But uh, the saw is still <clears throat> in cutting condition, so that's good. Look at this tree, man. Like this is good and dead. When the bark comes off like that, she's good, especially at the base. <laughs> That's prime wood. Okay, we're gonna buck her up. <laughs> Look at that, eh? She never left, stayed right there. Good wedge, good wedge. Okay, well, I haven't sharpened this chain since I got it, but still cut pretty good.
thing works good for a China mobile. Yeah. Muffler mod and that new chain. There's nothing wrong with that saw. It's a $150 saw, Canadian. That'd be like 110 bucks US. You can't beat it. The question is, how many years will it last? Husqvarna still. It's probably lost lifetime. This thing, well, we'll find out. Probably not as long. Not sure where we lost you, but the phone died because it's too cold. This thing's running great. This is how a saw is supposed to run. A lot of saws don't idle. They idle erratic. They won't keep running. Something's not right there. Usually crank seals and tuning is why. But this thing's running great. darker than it looks in the in the screen so what i'm gonna do i'm gonna finish bucking this tree until i run out of fuel we still recording yeah i'm going to uh we're gonna cut like crazy like a madman and then i'm gonna check the exhaust and see if it still glows red hot remember when i first got this saw it used to glow red hot had a catalytic converter type thing in it just crazy hot then i did a few little mods to it to help cool it down to get it to where it's at now it cuts better than it ever did and um yeah we'll see how it is i'm gonna cut here and uh i think what i'll do is i'll go i'll shut the camera off i gotta let it warm up okay it's still going it keeps shutting off me because it's so cold i keep warming it up on the exhaust of the muffler but i'll delim this and then we'll see how this exhaust is if it glows red or not after i make a few cuts because i haven't really looked at it yet i've never cut in the dark yet don't cut in the dark folks don't do it <laughs> i just uh yeah i know too many people i got out here early earlier and uh, yeah i just stopped talking to too many people but you know what it's nice because sometimes you get into a predicament and uh you meet these people out in the middle of nowhere and then they help you get unstuck and uh like which actually happened back there that fellow there helped me uh you know get out i would have got out on my own but whatever it's just nice having somebody else out helping you know so okay i'm gonna put this in my pocket and uh my body heat to warm up this uh camera a little bit and then uh i'll delim and we'll see if it's red hot it'll be a little darker by then be about 10 minutes from now we'll be back look at that all i did was buck that tree down or cut that tree down, buck up a few, like maybe like 10, 10 chunks of that tree. And my temperature is completely cold again. That's what it reads. It reads 104 when it's stone cold. I mean, it's still a bit warm, but it's obviously under that. Come on, oil pressure. <laughs> Celsius and although I'm Canadian and we go by the metric system I don't like that for when it comes to temperatures I'm still old school I like Fahrenheit so I switched it to Fahrenheit and this is in PSI the other one was KPA and I switched to PSI so that's 40 PSI oil pressure and this thing runs about 170 degrees when it's warm fan kicks on at 175 degrees Fahrenheit this is Fahrenheit already, and this is just your bolts. Yeah. Hey, we're gonna back up here.
uh, it, it's a lot darker than it looks to this screen. But it's okay, we're safe now, we've fallen the tree. We're just bucking from here, so who cares? The nice thing about the uh, when it's dark around here, what, late in the day, we don't have the wind. It's just dead calm right now, it's just so nice. My buddy just called me, he wants me to go out for a visit. It's gonna be a heck of a jaunt to go visit him, but ah, we'll see, I might. I gotta hurry up, I'm gonna buck this up. I gotta load it all up, I'm gonna make a heaping load. This is gonna be another big one. And then uh, I won't get this whole tree, I don't think, in one load. We'll see, but I doubt it. Actually, you know what? I might. Yeah, I might. I might just get the whole tree. We'll see. Stay tuned. Oh, hey, I got to tell you about something. So, look at this. My new hat. I got this off Amazon. This thing's awesome. I know they're not brand new or nothing, but I've never had one. It's got a couple little settings. And there we go. Super handy, because you don't have to have a big headlight, you know, like you don't even, just a toque, you know, you don't, with a headlight, you always know you got it on, and it's fine, a headlight's good too. They're not as bright as some of those headlights, but uh, anyways, yeah, if you want one of these bad boys, look at that, they even collect the branches for you. Uh, if you want one there, link in the description of the video, and uh, buy away, it's a great Christmas gift, I'm going to buy these for <laughs> all my friends. Yeah, they're just so handy, here, let's just see. So that's my light on the camera. Oops, what happened there? there? That's my light on the camera. Let's see if I can shut the light off. There we go. That's just the light on my uh, on my toque. That's no light on the camera. It's pretty bright, actually. Really bright. I've been using it for work. I just love it. I got to check the, uh, you know, you know, we get there. It's dark when, in the wintertime. It is dark anyways. We got to check our oils. Uh, I run a cat dozer and, uh, you know, we got to check oils, coolant level, check our tracks and pre-operating inspection kind of thing. So it's nice to have a light and like, it's nice to have an actual headlight, not a light that you hold with one hand. Cause you got to climb up on these things like, you know, climbing up on monkey bars and stuff. So. Look how bright that is. So yeah, they're a good little light. There you go. Okay, we're gonna get back to this cutting business. Oh yeah, and so there's the little light, right? Now, the cool thing about this is it's rechargeable. So you just take this off. You just take this little rubber piece off. You just plug it into your charger for your phone or into your laptop. And it'll have like a green light and a red light. And so it'll start out red and then when it's charged, it goes green. It's just awesome. Like it's a real handy little thing. So if you don't have one, definitely put it on the list. And uh, yeah, if you buy it from uh, me, like through the, through the link in the description, I actually make a little bit of money off that. So, and, you know, if you're watching this and you got a YouTube channel, Join that Amazon Associates thing. It's uh, free. And any any links that you have on there and anything that anybody buys, you actually make a commission off of. So, like, why well, have all these big companies making all the big, you know, money? You're helping them out. Helps you out. You, you know, you get some beer money out of it. It's not like millions of dollars, but definitely a nice little, uh, you know, addition to the old piggy bank. And uh, there you go. There you go, folks. Link in the description. Buy away. And uh, maybe we'll all be millionaires by the end of the day. <laughs> hey, that rhymes. Okay, Mr. Poland, Mr. Mastercraft, you're parked because you won't start in the cold Canadian weather. And uh, that's not good, is it? Is it? No, that's not good. Yeah, it is. It's a good little saw, but I mean two things that you just witnessed. One, it won't start. Two, this thing won't grab in the cold. That's no good. We can't have that. Where's little Mac? You're getting replaced with little Mac. Little Mac doesn't give me any grief. He's ported and he still doesn't give me any grief. Even though he's only got 97 pounds cranking compression, he would fire on like the third pull in this weather. So uh, 
you're still a good saw and all, but you're uh, you're dedicated for the summer for what most people would actually use a chainsaw for. So yeah, you're gonna go. You're uh, bye bye. Off you go now. <laughs> yeah, I'll just uh, I'll sell that one. It's uh, it's a good saw for the average person, but just not for me. Like I'm taking it. This is, I guess, you could call extreme conditions. I mean, cold, hot. That thing, it starts. So it comes along every time. It just always starts. Oh man, these are nice big chunks. I'm gonna have to cut that one more. Okay, folks, I'm gonna show you something here. So, in the summertime, I want this thing to run cool. In the wintertime, like it's cold enough now that like my toes are already, my toes are frozen. Like I've got two pairs of socks on with these Dunlop boots on and they're a bit frozen already. Uh, I'm not cold, but uh, you know, your fingertips and your toes, at least for me, that's what gets cold first. And uh, their toes are frozen. So anyways, the saw, this thing has been running for about 10, maybe even 15 minutes now. That's all it takes to completely cool these things down. Like it's not warm at all right now. It's cold to the touch. So these things, these little Chinese uh, chainsaws, have this now when I first did the review on this I didn't know what it was I just never thought of it but it's actually for winter time so that's how it is in the summertime for the winter I leave it open so when the saw shuts off all that heat rises keeps everything nice and warm in here so this thing's gonna fire right up when I or it should fire right up when I start it we'll see because like I say See this? Totally cold. Wow, well, like, I mean, it's not, it's a little, very, barely warm. It's not cold, 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 but cold enough that I can sit there and hold my skin on it. Okay. So she, so we'll see if she fires up here. Let me just uh, set the camera up here. Where he is. So it's live action, so you know you're you're getting the real story from me. Okay, let's see if she starts. Now I'm not gonna. Yeah, I'll put the choke on, I guess, just to see. Now, if I didn't have that flap open, it probably wouldn't have started that easy. So just pointing that out for anybody who has these saws or any saws like it. Now you know. Now look at this. You know you got a good dead tree when you get a nice big check in the whole tree like that. You know? You know, folks? Why have we got a shadow there? There we go. You see? Okay, I'll delimit here. I'm not gonna get this. That's just one, two, three, four, five. That's, that's seven pieces, and I've already got. I guess a fairly decent tree for around here. So yeah, I'm not gonna go. I said I was gonna go crazy. I don't know if I will tonight. I'm gonna go get some smaller ones on the end of this tree. I'll go delimit up here. 
I'll deal them from here on in and I'll start taking the smaller stuff. like that folks just like that oh go oh. shut this light off okay <laughs> here we are boy that's nice wood what is that is that spruce or is that pine <laughs> it's so hard to tell sometimes I don't even care. All I know is that the bark's falling off of it. Look at it. Would you just look at it? I mean, it doesn't get any better than that. And uh, yeah, we're gonna burn it up. Burn, baby, burn. It's on fire. Okay, well, I'm gonna load this up. Just awesome when the bark falls right off like that. Jeez, that's nice. Cheesy. Cheese and rice, that's nice. Okay, said I wasn't going for a big load. Now I think we're going for a big load. We're going to see here, folks. Stay tuned. You never know what's going to happen in D Woods. Because when you're in D Woods, Anything can happen. Let's not get a pan out. There we go. Awesome. awesome. So awesome, folks. It doesn't get any better than this on a Saturday night out in Canadian bush. Like that. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Pretty good, folks. Pretty good. Not too bad. Uh oh, what's that? Oh, I forgot one. I'm going to have to fire that up. Jack song very good without a chain break. There we go. Hey folks, I'm gonna shut the camera off. And uh can you see me? I'm trying not to blind you. I'm gonna shut the camera off. It's pitch black now. And uh I'm going to tie her down. And yeah, I guess we'll go and dig out that drift. But I might know a shortcut. We'll see when we get there.
here, folks. Well, um, there you are. I just cut like six pieces and then I threw the camera on, cut two more and then just, you see, I rev the heck out of it. It doesn't even show a little bit of a glowing red whatsoever. So that catalytic converter that they had in there, like I get it, you know, they're trying to, they're trying to make less emissions out of these things for better air quality and stuff like that. But I mean, like, I mean, it's a tiny little motor, right? <laughs> But, um, I mean, how much, how much emissions does it spit out, right? And how much emissions would there be if I caught the forest on fire? Which is exactly what this thing is going to do. That muffler is red hot, man. Like it's, uh, or was red hot. When it had the catalytic converter in it, it would just glow totally red hot. And it actually would burn the bark when you were, when you were sunk in on the dogs there. And um, you were getting close to the wood. It would, uh, it would actually burn the wood. And now it doesn't do that anymore. And it also doesn't glow anymore. So this is the way to go. Like, you know, there's places where we've got to save the environment and this isn't going to save the environment. It's just not because somebody's going to set the forest on fire because that exhaust is so crazy hot. Even just laying it down for a second when it's that hot is going to start something on fire, could start something on fire. And then how many, how much emissions, how much, it, uh, like how much smoke and stuff would be in the atmosphere after a whole forest fire started let alone all the costs and the dollars to try and put the fire out and possibly the animals and uh and even people's homes and even people dying you know because of it so you know these guys they they sit in an office right they don't get out in the real world they need to get out in the real world and see what goes on here like we don't need this this thing doesn't even smoke actually hardly I've got it tuned perfectly and you hardly see any smoke just because of this oil that I'm running and um, because it's tuned right, you know. Anyway, that's it. That's my envir environmental rant for tonight. Okay, I'm going to load this up. I'm not going to record anymore until we're farther out on the trail. We're probably going to either have to dig our way through that drift or we're going to have to take that shortcut that I know about that may or may not be possible, but we're going to find out. Okay, stay tuned. We'll have a beer or something. Okay, we got a strap down there. Not really where I wanted it, but that's where it's gotta go for tonight. Oops. Strike one. There we go. You can hear the coyotes giving her already. It's not even late. Well, this isn't the way I want. I gotta get a better setup. Yeah, look at this. Oh, that might get me bad. Okay. I'm gonna put one around the back from here all the way to the other roll cage. It'll be good. Guaranteed for life, folks. <laughs> okay. This one I'll put up here. Just a little extra insurance. Can you see that? You probably can't see that. But there you go. Not a bad load. We gotta put the one on the front yet. Our counterweight. It's not very big, but we don't have a heaping load, just a a, a decent load. Ooh. Need some choke here, folks. Go. Oh, no. You don't like to be started like that.
and warm up. Cold like this. It's only been down for 15 minutes, but they don't take long when they get cold, right? Otherwise, you're cold season, so. is out. Oh, look at this. Level as can be. Okay, counterweight. Heavy side on the passenger side. Okay. There we go. I just go like this. Oops, hold on. Did I just oh, did I screw that up? I might have. I did. I gotta go a little bit more. There we go. Okay, should be good. This goes in here like that. Get your fingers out of there. <laughs> Whoops. Right through the freaking rad, but it doesn't have one. There, so. Yeah, there's a branch there. Okay, and then we just go like that, and like this here, and like that there. Oh, and we fell. We fall. We fall. We fall. We did it. Did it. Stay. Stay. Hey boy, stay. Don't move. Don't move. Okay, here we go. There we go. <laughs> Not even an issue. Okay, now we'll go get um, Mr. Radley's bar guard. There he is. There he isn't. Oh, now we have to do this. the bar guard. Seems to get a little chewed up. There we go. I'll throw that on the front. On the front here. I got another bungee. Ooh. I got another bungee strap. I gotta load up that Mastercraft, that Poland 2350 CVA. 1977 or 8 or 9 or 10 or 11, 12. And we're gonna continue on. Here we go folks. We got a decent load. Okay, we'll be back. You know how I got the bear spray? You know why I got that? I don't have that for the bears. I have that. Well, I shouldn't say that. The bears are still out. The big boars, the big males, they don't go to bed till January sometimes. They're out giving her. So you never know, right? But use my chainsaw. Those guys are not coming around. Trust me, the bears do not want to go near a man. Uh, but um, you get the odd crazy cougar, and I'm not talking about, you know, the good cougars. I'm talking about the, the wild ones out in the bush here, the animals. And uh, they get a little stupid sometimes, and they get bold sometimes. I, I've actually seen them where they'll kind of be in the area. They shouldn't even be here. I'm making so much noise, but they're here. I've seen that once before, so that was enough. So I bring that, even though it's two or three years expired. <laughs> And the other thing is um, we got a lot of druggies that live out here in the bush, right around me where I am right now. And if they decide to get stupid with me, then I got a little treat for them right here. It's just a little treat. If you've never been tear gassed before, you won't know the difference. I have. I know it don't feel good. <laughs> so um, 
I didn't get tear gas because I was doing anything bad. It was our chemical warfare training. Um, that's what they do when you're in the, the army or the infantry or any, I think, I don't know if they teach you that in basic training or not. I can't remember. But anyway, they, they were teaching us chemical warfare training and they used tear gas for that. So it does not feel good at all. It's, uh, burns you up pretty good in your lungs, your skin, everything. Some of you protesters might know. <laughs> okay. Well, we're going to continue on here and, uh, we'll see if this, this drift is, if we're going to pound through the drift, cut, uh, dig it open, or if we're going to take the shortcut, we'll find out. Okay. Well, we're ready to go. And, uh,
shortcut. Shortcut confirmed. <laughs> Worked out good.